I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about it hurts to let you go. Letting go of somebody that you love is one of the hardest things you'll ever have to do. Yes, it is. Whether it's a breakup or something happens and somebody you know dies or yeah. even sometimes just moves away. It's oh, incredibly yes. painful. And people don't think about moving away, but it is a big one. Yeah. Yeah, particularly for kids. Uh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Devastating right. as a child. Yeah, I've been in that situation. Yes, you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and one of the reasons that it's so difficult is not understanding what happened, how it possibly happened. How did this breakup happen? I don't understand. I've been there. Yeah. One of the things that helped me get so good at what I do was obsessing over what caused this breakup. Right. Because when I started to explore that, it helped me understand how I can fix it, what I have to do to repair it, because I know what went wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. It's much easier when things make sense. Exactly. Yeah. So Margaret has a little article here that has a couple good points that she liked that we're going to talk about. Okay. That will maybe help you understand why it's so hard to let them go. It is. It really it is. It is terrible. Um, sometimes I think it's even worse than a death. I do too. Because you can't grieve. Death is final, but if you've still got a partner out there that you loved, it's even harder. I have said numerous yeah. times that I felt like uh, the breakup uh, that I've had or several breakups that I've had were worse than losing my mom. Yeah. And I have said that I think the only thing that could be worse than a breakup would be losing a child if you had a child oh. pass away. That would that for me yeah, that is the, the worst, worst thing all. possible. Yeah. And I'm going to make that abundantly clear because somebody somehow got that confused and wrote a nasty comment one day. Really? About yeah, how could you say that losing a child is not worse than a breakup? That's not what I said. <laughs> I would never say that. Yeah. <laughs> okay? I know because I have two little ones and that would be the worst thing we, that, that ever that happened. That is the worst thing that ever happened. That is anybody. the worst, yep. yes. Yep. But a breakup is, I think, for me, it was worse uh, than when I lost my mom. Because I think it was so final when I lost my mom. Well, uh, yes, and you had, because she had been sick for a long time, you had time for anticipatory grief. Yes. Right. My mom wound up getting terminal cancer and it was quite shocking because she had been in good health yes. for her whole life. And watching her go through that was extremely difficult. difficult right. But um, maybe it would have been a little bit different had she died in a car accident. Suddenly. Yeah. Or Suddenly is worse. But, yeah. you know, the thing that is so different about the breakup is that you don't know if it's truly final. You don't know if you can get another chance with this person. And You never know. It's just too many ifs. Yeah, and too many what ifs. Yeah, as opposed to death where you know it's the final thing and there's nothing you could do about it. In a breakup, there is a lot of things you can do about it to try yeah. and re improve your chances of trying sure. getting that person back. Sure. So, Margaret, share the points that you had from this article. Okay. Cause you this is an article called It Hurts to Let You Go. Yeah. Okay? And it's from our Canadian friends from the University of New Brunswick mm -hmm. in Canada. And um, the professor's name is Dr. Duck. No, I didn't make that up. <laughs> and his cousin, Dr. Turkey, made some comments at the end. I made that up. Dr. Duck describes some ways to explain the process that people go through. Mm -hmm. He suggested that successful coping requires understanding why the relationship ended and ultimately letting go of the relationship. It's and that's really the grief process, yes. letting go. Some individuals have a very difficult time letting go 
until they attain some sort of explanation for why the relationship ended. Yes. I get many complaints for pe from people saying, but they wouldn't tell me why. Yes. Okay. Oh, that is huge. They wouldn't tell and me why. And we desperately want them to tell us because we want to tell them, well, that's not a good reason. We yeah. can fix it. Yeah. I, I could tell you one of my breakups years ago, I did that oh, so bad. I was like, I do, just tell me why. I don't understand why. Help me. And nothing they said made sense. Because a lot of times, people don't give you the true reason. No, they don't. They give you a fake reason. Yeah. They give you a half-assed reason. They give you a reason to throw you off their tracks, especially if they started liking somebody else. Right. They're not always going to be forthcoming. But now that I have heard breakups a million times, I can say, oh, that's BS. Nope, not buying it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But I was going to say, I have never found anybody who said that. If you help them explore the relationship, what kinds of things did you fight about? Mm -hmm. What kinds of things did you really have in common? What kinds of things did you really not have in common? Mm -hmm. That most people can come up with a theory, at mm -hmm. least. And it's not as good as being told up front, but oftentimes it's enough for them to go on. And this article gives us some language, I think, in other ways to, to think about a relationship. So, knowing why is important, and the other thing is, it's the, is the element of surprise. That the more surprised you are by a breakup, the worse it is. Oh, I can attest to that. Yes, you can. You guys know the Applebee's story the Applebee's that I talk girl. about. Yep. Total, and, complete, and utter shock. Yep. Everybody that knew us could not believe it. All my friends, all my family, all her friends and family. Right. Nobody could believe that we broke up. I mean, literally every yeah. single person was like... They thought we were, I, when I told them, they literally thought I was joking. Yeah. I had very good friends yeah. who were just like, that, that's impossible. There's no way. And so it was such a complete and utter shock. Having all this time to reflect and look back and talk about all that stuff with Margaret over the years, because she was there was after good. that happened, we figured out, we put the pieces of the puzzle together, yes. that there were a lot of things going on with her yep. that had nothing, that had to, do nothing with to do with yep. me. That had nothing to do with But that's not how it feels when it happens. No. You're sure it's your fault. Oh, I was convinced. Yep. I've been, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right. So individuals who are more surprised by the breakup and did not expect or intend to break up may experience greater difficulties in adjusting to the loss of that relationship as well. Mm -hmm. And then he suggests several other ways to look at relationships that I thought were interesting and that were worth sharing. He reports people who have the most contact after a breakup report a higher level of commitment to the relationship at its peak. In other words, when the relationship was going at its best, they were totally committed. Uh-huh. Okay? And those people have a harder time and want more post-breakup contact. Also, the longer the relationship went on, the harder it becomes, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the partner who initiated the breakup um, has a tough time, but they're saying that the person who wants a lot of contact after the breakup usually has the partner who initiated the breakup. So if you didn't initiate the breakup, it's even harder. Yes, um, sure. The intensity of the breakup. Now, there's a big difference between breaking up over the phone and having an honest chat or having a sort of honest chat mm -hmm. or having a heck of a fight or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, the greater intensity of the breakup, um, and then it comes down again to surprise. Yeah. Um, so those are different ways you can look at a breakup. How committed were both of us when it was at its best? How long was the relationship? Yeah. And that speaks to the investment. So, in it. so they mean like, okay, had you been living together? Had right. you been married? Yes. Had you been engaged? Yeah. Have you had kids? Right. All of those things. The more uh, intense yeah. that it got, yeah. the, the harder, harder it is. is. The sure. harder it is. Yes, that makes and sense. For most of the breakups we talk about, people haven't been married, but often they have been together for a really long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so there are many, many areas where you can evaluate a relationship, and that's what I wanted to pass on. Mm -hmm. But I was struck by the surprise issue. 
Yes, and, and I'm I've not lived surprised. That. Yeah, I'm not surprised by the narrative because in dealing with anything, we need to have a story. We need to know what we're talking about. That's very important. Yeah, to have a narrative for any bad thing that ever happens in life, or for any good thing for that matter. Mm -hmm. But surprise certainly came out as a huge issue. Yes, the narrative one is a good thing to understand. Yes, is that when you kind of un you kind of look at the story of what happened you can kind of put the puzzle pieces together right. and it makes more sense. It makes more sense. Right? And with a little guidance with exploring, yeah. It, Obviously, if you did a coaching with Margaret or I, yeah. we're going to easily be able to figure out we're gonna help why it happened things. and figure out that narrative. Yeah. And then, you know, when you could do that, it's a lot easier to figure out how to fix it if you know what went wrong. And that's obviously what we're, you know, trained to do and we've yeah. looked at doing for right. so long. One of the common ones I've come across just recently I'm going to share is when partners who both have children really get serious about talking about how they would handle that. You know, mm -hmm. he may have two from a previous marriage, she may have one, um, that oftentimes people seem to break up around that. That's a common one I've heard lately. Yep. Yeah. So there are different factors that are going to make it harder for some of you to let go than others. Some of you guys that have been fighting with your partner for a long time, maybe you've broken up several times, you may have known this breakup was coming. You weren't surprised. Right. Other of you guys might be like, I cannot even believe it. I've had people that came home and stuff was gone. Right. They had I moved out. I can't imagine, yeah. Could you imagine how horrible imagine. that would be? Yeah, and you Just, had no clue, no way of anticipating it. Yeah, that's that's absolutely horrific to do to somebody. Absolutely. To, and I've seen it so often. Wow. Yeah, I would say I see that at least a few times a month. Yeah. Like where the person wow. just came home, completely gone, no trace. They took all this stuff, then they start calling them, and the person doesn't, doesn't pick, pick up. up. They, right. they, they block them. Oh, that is a cruel thing to do oh, to somebody. How cruel. how cruel. It is yeah. so cruel. Yeah. I don't understand how anybody could do that to somebody you love or ever love. You'd have to be pretty angry, I think. Yeah. Yeah? I think so, yeah. That's an angry act. Yeah, yeah. it certainly is. Yeah. All right. Okay. So hopefully you found this one helpful. If you like the video, put a like on there. And of course, if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. We, I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. Please feel free to contact me and I can get you in fairly quickly these days. That's right. So that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.